What's up, what's up? Welcome to Startup X, episode 46, presented by Two Sick TV. I'm your host, Six Sensei, and joining me today is Mr. Sean Zulu. Sean underscore Zulu. Why that, I got to tell you this every you gotta time, You got to save man. that for the Twitter guy. You don't. You got, uh, <laughs> you're, not, you're not Sean <laughs> underscore Zulu. <laughs> you can contact him on Twitter at Sean underscore Zulu. Yeah, and a special guest for today's podcast. Mr. Wack4863, what's up, buddy? I half expected you to uh, introduce me as a special guest, special Ed guest. A but special, I'll, I'll, a special, I'll go special with a special guest. That's all right. So, <laughs> yeah, great. Glad to be here. What's up, everybody? Bam, bam, bam. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Glad to have you, brother. Um, so you are the uh, content manager for Yaush main channel, correct? I am. I am. That yep. is awesome. That's awesome. And you helped found the Yaush channel? I did. Yosh Network. It's not just a channel. It's a network. I mean, yeah. they, they got a lot of cool things going on over there. Yes, we do. I'm excited about it. You guys helped put on the Clash of the Commentators. Uh, not you guys, but ma- mainly Yosh, Big Snacks, and those guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually had an opportunity to win that thing. So I'm really mm-hmm. excited about that. Um, some cool things coming down the pipeline. Stay tuned to Two Sick TV channel. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that here today. We want to get right. How do you feel about winning this? I'm man. excited about it. Just said I'm super excited about it. And yeah, you can't you can't drop a bomb like that and then yeah, walk away from it. it. So so you get like this really cool belt that I want to arm wrestle you for or thumb wrestle you. I know you won't do it because you're afraid of out. losing the belt. I, I tweeted it out, but um, I'm afraid of, I am I am afraid of losing the belt because I don't want to lose the belt. <laughs> but we we but did. I mean if you fly down here to New Orleans mm-hmm. and you come see me, I guess we can we we can work out some type of little situation. We'll we'll, we'll do something along those lines for the belt. Okay. Just, right. just for the opportunity to meet up with you. I mean, I've been talking to you for years. I mean, you, you were one of the guys who discovered my channel for Yaush. You and Jimmy hit me up and you were like, you know, when I was like at, at 200 subs, y'all right. were like, man, this guy's got, he's got some kind of spark that we like and we're mm-hmm. going to bring him onto the Yaush network. Even before, at this point, that was before it was, uh, y'all had a rule of 500, 500 subs and I, I was under that rule, yet you still wanted to bring me in because of some work I had done and, and basically some some opportunities I had to prove myself as a, as a competent content creator. Right. So, I mean, I really appreciate that because, you know, that goes a long way come, coming this far in, into into the scheme of things. I mean, that was two years ago almost. Uh-huh. And uh, you know, it was, it's been a lot of fun working with Yaush, and uh, I really appreciate you guys doing that. You you especially, I mean, like I said, you, you were one of the instrumental pieces of me getting in the Yaush network well breaking the rules basically you're totally welcome but stop trying to change the subject so back onto this uh this belt right? <laughs> i wasn't trying to <laughs> so, so the but, clash of the commentators belt yeah um, so this clash of the commentators belt even if i can't get it from you here, here's what i want to see okay all right all right let's let's hear it let's hear your opinion you you have to get like a <laughs> like a big man diaper Right, like or or like a like a sumo wrestler like like strap. I don't bomb, like where right? this is going, right? Okay. Now. And then you you have to go shirtless and and put that belt on, and then have it's Sean not a sumo ha- belt. It's lots a- of baby oil. Lots no, no, of baby no, oil. No, no, well, I mean, can you I can do the baby oil thing do if I need you want to shave to, but- my chest and all too. <laughs> sure, that might be a good thing. But have Sean go with a with a camcorder and follow you around. <laughs> <laughs> and go everywhere you can and just challenge random people to commentary wars to a battle <laughs> right right That's then the and best there idea. they have to battle easily <laughs> easily the best idea i've ever heard in my entire life that would be uh a sight to see i would say that much now the <laughs> only a sight to see the only thing that would suck is if you actually get your ass handed to you but you take all that out in post production, so oh, I wouldn't okay. really so worry about it. You never show if somebody beats me in a commentary. Absolutely which I don't think- not. You are the 2013 <laughs> Clash of the Commentators winner. You cannot let that title go. <laughs> and I won't. I won't let the title go. <laughs> Hopefully, some incredible things coming down the pipeline. Um, I will be doing an unboxing video of said belt. Hell nice. yeah! And uh, there was some incredible prizes that uh, that I'm going to be receiving. Also, unboxing and reviews on anything I've never reviewed before. Um, I'm excited about all that, man. It's really, really, really interesting that the community can do things like this. I mean, this community, starting with you and, and Grover and, and my buddy Lethal Frag, I mean, starting there and all the way up until today has never ceased to amaze me and, and how nice and how generous everybody can be. I mean, of course you got your trolls and you got your douchebags out there, but from, from anybody who's put in any time and any effort in this community, I mean, they all understand and we all get it. You know what I mean? 
Right. And it's just, it's never ceases to amaze me. So Clash of the Commentators is one of the things that also never ceased to amaze me or didn't cease to amaze me because it's just something that was put on by the community for the community. And we all had a, had a chance to take part in it either, either by submitting your video or by voting or, you know, it was all for the community. So I'm excited to be the winner. And, um, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun going on. Hopefully I can be part of the next round. If they do it again in 2014, I could be part of that as the previous, you know, winner. Yeah, yeah, you should be like the one of the guest judges or something. That's what I was thinking. I, I and think you know that what? Would be I, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna enter again, and I'm gonna use the exact same commentary <laughs> that I did <laughs> that I did this time. But I'm gonna put it over put Call of Duty Call footage. of Duty gameplay. That's right. And, and I That's bet right. you I'll win. <laughs> I bet you you will win. I bet you. <laughs> it's one of those things where you had to appeal to, to the to the masses, and I took I took that into consideration. Going, and of course, I'm already a Call of Duty commentator, mm-hmm. but in one of the in one of the successive rounds in your round two or round three or whatever it may have been uh, i was considering doing like an xbox or a playstation um you know kind of centric commentary and i was like wow i really don't want to alienate one side or the other yeah it's right. tough yeah and so i took all of those things into consideration um when when making my commentaries because when it comes down to public vote you got to appeal to the masses yeah and, you know, it was rough to make those commentaries to come up with subjects that, that, that fit that bill, that very specific bill of, you know, you can't alienate nearly anybody. Yeah, but that's the type of thinking that got you to belt. You understand me? <laughs> I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. So I, I guess maybe now at this point, can we, can we put that to rest for now? And move on to some of the news that we got for the week. Yeah, perhaps, I think we're perhaps. both tired of hearing you gloat about it at this point. <laughs> I mean, we wanted you to Yo. talk a little bit about it. Now it's Yo, like 30 minutes into on. the podcast. You're still grinding it into us. All right, what, what kid, news do we have? Kid. So, all right. So, the biggest news of right now, Xbox One launch date announced November 22nd. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So that's it- November, November 15th is the PlayStation 4. Yeah, so why do you think they chose a week after PS4? I have no idea. I was praying they would choose a week before. But I mean, it's I'm not thinking- its not like they can, you know, wait until PS4 comes out and say, oh my gosh, you know, they put this in it, you know, and we need to do that. I mean, they're already going to be shipping, right? I mean... Well, actually, when you say that, it's interesting because they can kind of change something at the last minute, and they have changed something at the last minute, and they've upgraded the processing unit. So the central processing unit has been um, boosted. The power has been boosted from 1.6 gigahertz to 1.75 gigahertz. Uh, right. At the last minute, they made this change, and now they're in full production. So my imagining is they may have been able to make that November 8th rumor that we heard about that Walmart leaked. Mm-hmm. Um but now with this last minute change that may have changed production schedule and they may not be able to meet the production deadline until November 22nd, which is two weeks after what we, what we originally heard as the rumor. Right. It's kind of scary that they're making critical changes like that this late in the game. And you think about the red ring situation that happened in the 360 generation. I, I agree with you. you gotta 100%. get that shit together. I agree with that. That's the thing. That's, that's kind of one of those things that I keep thinking about is like, you know, I'm going to get the Xbox One, and, and I could justify that in one way, and that's Call of Duty. I mean, that's what I play mostly. That's what I play, and, and I'm super excited about Titanfall. But if I if I got the PlayStation 4 first, you know, I would probably get the Xbox One by the time Titanfall releases. But, you know, the Call of Duty early early content, things like that, um, it's just one of those things that, that, are, that matters to me uh, more than most other things. I'll probably get the PlayStation 4 eventually, but... Out of the gate, I got to get the Xbox One because of that early content for Ghost. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Because if you think about this, though, uh, November 22nd, that's only a week before Black Friday. Now, us in the U.S., we know what Black Friday means for business. Right. It's incredibly insane. Uh, You know, hopefully, after a week is over with, they still have any units left, you know, from their standpoint, hopefully for them. Um to be able to sell something on Black Friday. And, you know, PlayStation 4, same way. I mean, they probably won't have any left. But what's interesting about this also is they're coming out before the PlayStation 4 in Europe. Right. By almost a week. But right at a week, right? No, they're launching uh, November 29th in Europe, the mm-hmm. PlayStation 4 is. Yep. So it's a, week er- it's a week late here, but it's a week early over there. So is that kind of a balancing do you think that's just going to balance out in total sales, worldwide global sales in the end? 
Probably. I guess that's what they're aiming for. I mean, because if you consider, right, so Xbox 360 especially has dominated in the United States up until now. You know, PlayStation's starting to gain that ground. But now it's time for the next generation of consoles. So basically all of that conversation is over with. So do you think they're going to rest on their laurels with the idea that Xbox has dominated in the, play- in the U.S. and PlayStation has dominated in the U.K. for the most part? Um, do you think that could turn the tide? Or is that price difference really going to... Is that the big? Is that the big? You know, difference maker. Hundred bucks. A hundred bucks is a lot of money right now. I mean, there's you know, uh, don't get me started on economy or anything like that because we'll be here all night. But a hundred bucks is a lot of money. So I think somebody that's been with PlayStation, you know, for a long time already has their loyalties there, and uh, they're definitely not going to spend a hundred bucks to jump to something else. I think yeah. I think the I other thing we have to think about is the whiplash that uh you know everybody's pretty much forgotten about at this point with everything Xbox was going to do. I mean, they weren't going to allow you to to give your game to your buddy. You had to take it back to GameStop and they were going to re-encode it or whatever and then they were going to sell it and all this stuff and then, you know, being online and everything. So I personally at this point I'm wary about anything Microsoft. Like, I want to see a finished product. I want to have somebody else test it out and tell me that it's good before I decide to dump money on it. I can agree with that. I can can respect that. I think American consumers are different from, uh, you know, European consumers. I think European consumers are a lot more conservative, and I think they kind of analyze things a lot more than we do in america you know I, that's a good point that's a real good point yeah i mean we we're kind of the the you know especially this generation we're you know buy it now it's disposable we'll throw it away in three weeks and buy a new one kind of you know that's kind of our life yeah, um, spontaneous yeah purchases. so yeah but as far as the 100 dollars, i expect microsoft to have this vicious uh viral marketing campaign where they kind of try to make it seem like that extra hundred dollars is is worth it in you know in some kind of way with uh the connect or the content or something that it does like i think that's kind of what their marketing is going to be as we get closer to the 22nd but once you leave your house you know you see this market and you, and you grasp all of it and you leave your house and you're like yes i'm going to get that xbox right and then you get to the store and you're standing in front of it and you're, you're, you're at least mildly contemplating the amount of money that you're about to spend. Right. Um, at that point, right? What's the disconnect between the house and you're all juiced up? And by the time you get over to the store and you're like, well, there's this other console that does damn near everything that this one does. If not, you know, more and less vice versa. They each do their own things right and wrong. Um, you know, this one's a hundred dollars less. Why not just grab that one? You know what I mean? Like, that sticker shock is a huge factor. When it comes to console purchases, especially, like you said, whacking it in an economy like this. Yeah. I think it's a huge factor, but, you know, I also think that the majority of people that are going out week one, day one, they're really well read as far as gaming. So they know about stuff like you were talking about, the the Call of Duty early content and, you know, all the games that are going to be available on Xbox exclusively. So Yeah, you're right. The sticker shock, it's a big deal, but not as big as, as other things. But you we're know talking I mean? Black Friday consumer. Yeah, we're, we're, not talking, we're not talking the, the gamer We're not talking about us. We're, Pe- we're in that bubble that we talk about. Yeah, we're people like, people that are already set on buying a system, they've got it pre-ordered. They know what system they're going to buy. Right. They're, they'd be... You know, they'd be pissed off to to walk in and find out that there weren't any there. So they've got it pre-ordered. They're set. They're ready to go. Um, for the average consumer, the mom going out to buy it for their kid, um, you know, I, I think it's it's going to be a different scenario. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I, agree I mean, with the that. day one consumer is is way different from the the early adopter is completely different from the casual consumer. Right. Yeah, and the, the casual consumer is where that sticker shock is going to come into play, and where your advertising campaign that you're talking about is going to you know it's really it's going to get them to the store expecting to buy a console, but you know when they get there and they you know 
take it take consideration on the amount of money they're about to spend they may look around and see what else is available and yeah. that's when they may find that hundred dollars cheaper yet it does almost everything and then you go to gamestop i mean those guys are relatively knowledgeable about what's going on if you go in there talking about hey i want a new console what's good well, well then how does that how does the wii u factor in then when you have it doesn't <laughs> well i mean it, it really doesn't but when you have this black friday you know rush of of moms and parents and, and people who might not know they're buying it for somebody else for the christmas thing and they're looking at both of these and then they see the wii u which is significantly cheaper but and it, and it's nintendo nintendo is easily more recognizable as a brand to most uh older parents than than these two playstation and xbox so I then can, you got to think about that too i can agree I, with that but do, I, uh, would, I think go ahead go ahead Wack. i would think that most households that are in that kind of mind frame probably already have a wii u and the parents play the Wii U on a regular basis, but their kids been bugging them for an X, Y, or a Z. So you think that the kids already said, this Wii U sucks. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> may, games it, may not, it may not be, hey, this Wii U sucks. It may be, you know, um, I can't play this game on the Wii U, and I really want to play this game, and I right. can only play it on, you know, da 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 And, and the kid's going to choose what it is. You know, yeah, right, I yeah, mean... Yeah. I don't know if either one of you guys are parents, but I know if my both, kid comes to me and says, I want an Xbox, even if it's a hundred bucks more, I'm going to buy him an Xbox. I'm not going to come back with a PS3 and say, Hey, I'm a cheap ass. This is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like you're not <clears throat> being a cheap ass because you're getting a comparable product. If not, if not in some ways better. By spending a hundred dollars less. Yeah, but that consumer, I mean, the big thing that you're consumer, missing is the connect. That, that Black Friday consumer, the one that's going out for what their kid wanted, they they don't, you know, they're not looking at that. They, that's, they're that's not going to look at, at at PS3 versus Xbox and go, oh, this one's got a bigger camera and you can talk to it and <laughs> I can plug in my DVR. <laughs> yeah. You know, they don't care. They just want they their just kid to what be the happy. Kid wants. And, and I'm I'm a big Black Friday shopper. I'm like a chick when it comes to Black Friday. I wake up super early. I get out there. I, ch- I mean, you, I get excited. What time about do you it. do like, your makeup before you leave? Uh, <laughs> at midnight. At midnight, I start. I don't finish until about two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I really do do a lot of uh, Black Friday shopping. Um, I go out there and I check it out. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you know, when I go out there, I'm expecting to drop some money. Right. So at least that Black Friday shopper, they may not you know, like you're. You're right. They may just cater to the kid and what they wanted for Christmas, yep. and that's it. Yep. So well, I you got to agree think with you on mo- that. For most sure. families save up all year long for that Black Friday event because that's when they can buy all that stuff. That's you know? right. That's right. <clears throat> that's absolutely correct. Now, speaking on the day one, the early adopters, uh, you think they may take this into consideration? There will be no external support, no no external storage support. For the Xbox One at launch. Yeah. Yeah, now, this see, is that, new now. That's going to suck, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. No, I, they'll definitely have uh, solutions in place before you run out of storage on that 500, uh, 500, 500 gig both, disc. Both consoles. And uh, I think that maybe they're just they're just doing this. They're taking a little bit of time to hammer out and make sure this works correctly like they want it to. I'm hoping that cloud storage becomes a big deal, though. It, with it the, needs ex, to be the Xbox yeah, it One. It really does need to be. And yeah. I know, I know, being a PlayStation user, they do some cloud storage stuff. Um, as far as like your game, uh, your game saves. Both consoles currently do pretty much game do saves. They? Yeah, yeah. They give you like 500 megs or something like that. It's, I think it's closer to 300 actually, but it's plenty enough for the game saves on this current gen. Like I have two Xboxes in my house, like uh, bedroom and living room, so. That that cloud saving feature is a lifesaver. Right. So I'm hoping they expand on that. You know what oh, I mean, and and really make that a prominent feature because that's kind of new to the 360. That just came about in the last year or so. It's fairly new. It's fairly new, and it's one of those fragile type of systems. Yeah, and, and it's one of those things that's important because if it goes down, your game saves, and if you start saving bigger chunks of data on there, you know, much more important things will yeah. be lost, right, or inaccessible. So, you know, hopefully they're taking their time to get it right, but. You know, talking on the uh, external USB, I mean, external hard drive via USB, I think PlayStation announced that they will support this. Yes, they did. At launch. And that's a big deal for me. I mean, I like having the the extra storage if you want to throw a load of music. I mean, these things are talking about being your media hub. I mean, they want to be your hub. So music, movies, everything you've got, they want it on here, but they don't want to give you the storage, at least for Xbox space. 
both of them only 500 gigs. It's not that much. No, but, it's not. But, you know, if Xbox doesn't support this quickly, you know, I'm talking weeks, maybe a month out, uh, you're going to see some real ramifications, possibly in, in terms of sales, I think. Yeah, so you, you actually bring up an excellent point. The, the external storage isn't just for saving stuff off of your Xbox. It's for, let's say I want to load a, you know, bunch of pictures of, um, you know, my family on the Xbox and have I thought it you were going to say something a little more dicey. <laughs> play a slideshow. You can load yeah. pictures of whatever you want on yours, but. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, have it play a slideshow or, you know, you've got, uh, a vast movie collection that's on your hard drive, you know, that you want to, you know, you use on your, your tablet and your computer. And, you know, I mean, I, I think the smartest thing any company that's involved with, uh, entertainment, technology, uh, anything like that is to have it as open as possible to receive things from all over. Because, I mean, that's what I want. I want to be able to share uh, something from my phone to my tablet to my laptop to my, you know, gaming console to my desktop and kind of be able to access it all, you know, from any one of those things. Yeah. And it's strange that, you know, Xbox One and Microsoft, they're kind of promising exactly what Wax saying, but then they're like, but at launch, we're not going to do external, uh, storage. It's yeah. kind of strange. It's like a strange play. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely. Is. And one of those things when you talk about how fast you're going to run out of storage on the Xbox. Now, the PlayStation won't require full game installs. Right. The Xbox One will require full game installs. Right. So if you have five or six games and plus a handful of indies and you're done and maybe a movie or two. You, you, I mean, 500 gigs is not much in today's in today's uh you know storage capacities. Nope. Yeah. Not so I mean, how many gigs is a, a next gen game going to be, man? Well, I mean, they're using Blu-ray, so the max I think is what 50. <laughs> And they're probably going to take up at least sixty percent of that right out of the gate. Right. Yeah. Fifty per fifty to sixty percent of that with you know these these semi next gen games because I mean right out of the gate you're not going to pull you're not going to push all the power out of the system that no, that they can no. that they can get. Right. But I mean, so they made that change. Speaking on power, they made that change to boost the um to boost the CPU power, and I think that's. And maybe, you know, that differentiating factor that we were talking about before between the PlayStation and the Xbox, um, in, in another podcast where we talked about, you know, the, the PlayStation 4 will be more powerful. Maybe this kind of, you know, blurs those lines just a little bit more and, and making them, you know, a little bit more. I'm not even. sure because I never understood or got a clear explanation of the, the DDR5 versus the DDR3 memory. And if how that affects it, but what's the what's the uh, CPU jump they they claimed? One point six gigahertz to one point seven five gigahertz. So that's pretty good, considering that that's going to be your CPU locked in for your life of this console. That's it. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. so that you know, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. I think it's going to be nice. I think it's going to be you know, like I said, I think it's going to blur those lines a little bit more. But one thing that I saw in the news recently. Was and, and I don't know how much this is going to matter. I guess that's the question I'll pose. Uh, Xbox One will support up to eight controllers <laughs> at once. Would you hate octopuses, son? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hate on the octopuses <laughs> or octopi. I'm sorry. How, what's the plural? Of octopus? Octo octopi. You got it right. Oh, octopi. Yeah. yeah. Now the PlayStation supports four controllers, and my I guess my question is, does it matter? I mean, who the hell gets eight people? First of all, who's got enough money to get eight play Xbox One? No, how much money is that? I think it's sixty bucks a pop. Yeah, I can't, I can't add. I'm an so, idiot. <laughs> so I guess I guess my first question would be, what game are you using eight controllers on? Well, they did mention that not all games will support eight controllers. Well, but of course, kind of. You know, PlayStation Four. Uh, Shuhei Yoshido said, uh, you know, hey, we're gonna have four. We're gonna have four controllers. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. the head of head of PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which four seems fine, man. And the Xbox having eight, like. It doesn't seem very functional, but at least it has it. You I know mean, what the I mean? PlayStation like, supported seven, and the only game that comes to mind was FIFA. Oh, uh, PlayStation FIFA, three supports seven. It supports seven Bluetooth no devices. So right, you got a headset. It only supports seven Bluetooth devices, so it supports four controllers, a head, you know, two or three headsets, and that's it. So you know, if you got the little key keyboard pad and all yeah, that shit, yeah. that takes up a Bluetooth slot. Right. Um, this will support eight. Now, my question or my you know my thought is. What if there's more peripherals that come out that use those same, you know, those same slots, yeah, right, you know, bandwidth? I don't know if they're using Bluetooth. <clears throat> I don't think that they are, 
Um, but what if they come out with more peripherals that are cool, that maybe actually work well? You never know. They're probably going to be shit. But, you know, that could leave open some slots to make those things available. Like a cyborg helmet. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, for me, the, the more the merrier, I guess. You know, if you've got the option to do it and you never use it, fine. At least That's you exactly have the option. I, feel. I mean, yep. but again, not a deal breaker. No, of course it's not a deal breaker, yeah. but it's just an interesting thought that they support eight. The PlayStation supports four. Now, will the PlayStation only support four controllers and still have Bluetooth slots open for other things? I would imagine so. Right. I mean, yeah. you gotta have four controllers and maybe four headsets and things of that nature. So, you know, it, it may be it may be a wash at the end of the day. Right. So, can, can I drop a big bomb right in the middle of this? Get it, girl. What about <laughs> HDCP encoding? Because you brought you brought up that that the Xbox is now on Blu-ray. Correct. The correct. reason why PlayStation had HDCP in the beginning was because of Blu-ray, and they didn't want people ripping that quality. That's right. Right. Xbox supposedly has come out, and I can't find an actual confirmed post from Xbox where they've said. They're not going to have HDCP, but they have said supposedly that you're going to be able to use your own capture device. Yeah, but can't they find a way to where, like, if you're, you know, running a, a Blu-ray, it's it's protected. But if you're in any kind of game, you can you can capture it. Couldn't isn't that possible? Like, can't they find a way to make the system differentiate? I think you're absolutely correct. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think that PlayStation kind of took a one-sided boom. It's over. HTCP well, I think that might have been everything. the technology and, at the and, time. And you're right. It may not have been the way they wanted to do it. Maybe that's the only way they could do it was just to flip a switch, as right. Microsoft would do. <laughs> and just, you know, boom, There's HTCP is on. Nothing can pass through a, a capture device in HDMI format at all, ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe, like you said, and that's exactly what I was thinking, was that maybe they can they can differentiate what is being played because, I mean, the technology is out there. Come on. They could, they could tell what you're doing. And... You know, maybe it's coming a little bit more off the disc than anything else. That hey, this this is good. Right. This is good to go for an Elgato or any, right. you know H, HD PVR two. I would only guess, and this has no scientific uh, you know validity here, but I would guess that when PlayStation did this, it was kind of like a, a you know a, a one size fits all kind of thing, and they didn't realize that the the capture card you know culture would would blossom so much. Right. So I'm hoping that you know. Because this is the thing that I hope for both of these consoles is that these companies understand going into this gen that you have to be forward thinking. You right. have to be forward thinking. And if Xbox, you know, kind of disses everybody with a capture card, their own equipment, like they're going to, oh man, that 180 shit was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do it 720s all day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hypothetically, if, you know, if people start picking up their Xboxes or their PS4s day one, they take them home, hook them up to their capture devices, and nothing happens. What's gonna what what's what's gonna be the outcome? Are we gonna have kids going back to GameStop doing the um, discount tire commercial where the the old lady <laughs> throws the tire through the window? I mean, is it gonna I'm be a, mass I, I would havoc? be pissed. I would be pissed. I would be absolutely, uh, I would be really aggravated. Man, I think somebody needs to find this out. Whack, you can do this, right? You're pretty big up there. <laughs> there's nothing. Send the email. There's nothing <laughs> out there, bud. So the and, rumors are, like you were talking about the rumors, the rumors are, and, and, and you can't find anything solid from, from solid personnel. Right. But the rumors are that Xbox will not have HDCP on at least games. Right? That, that's and then, not. Uh, that PlayStation not, will have it. That's not the statement. Okay, the statement is that that's Microsoft it. said you'll be able to use your capture device with the Xbox 360. Now, the site that I found this on is a site that says this is what Hophog told us. So Hophog talked to Microsoft and said, are we going to be able to use, you know, our Hophog with your... Uh, your Xbox One, and they said, yeah, you'll be able to use the Hop Hog with the Xbox One. They didn't say anything about HVCP security. PlayStation has not come out and said anything to anyone, as far as I've read. 
Yeah, this exactly. This is definitely, definitely quite the, it could be quite the conundrum if we, we can't figure this out. This is an interesting topic. And if PlayStation is, you know, for the gamer as much of the, as they've been claiming to be, they, they should come out and address this and they should remove that content protection. Yeah. Well, I mean, my other thing is when, when they flipped said switch and turned on HDCP, when quality was of a concern for ripping content. Right. At that time, like you talked about forward thinking, you know, that was the highest quality content. Blu-ray was not a all the time everyday medium. It was I mean when they launched the PlayStation, it was you know, this Blu-ray that was the new thing. New, H- right. HD DVD was still out. That was you know, they brand had, new also. HD DVD well, that's what I'm and saying. They Blu-ray were both, were they were both brand, brand new. new. Mm-hmm. And, and it was at the time that, you know, it was way before Blu-ray kicked HD DVD's ass. Right. And um you know, maybe they flip that switch and could never flip it back. Yeah, kind of like the party chat thing where they, exactly. you know, they kind of just were like, damn, we can't go back and fix this. Like, sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so Sean, earlier you said something about uh, it being a software thing. So, yeah. it is a software thing. And I know this because I've seen a couple of videos and a couple of posts on uh, online about some dev unit PS3s. Where mm-hmm. they were actually able to go into some settings where there was HDCP encoding and turn that off. So oh, interesting. Hopefully, they'll figure all that out. And I didn't want to give you that information until I figured we were about done. But hopefully, they'll figure that out. Well, I, there's just got to be a way, man, with all this technology packed into these boxes for them to differentiate when you're playing a movie... Or you're playing a game, and now you can capture, and now you can't. That right. seems like, I mean, I don't know. I don't build these things, but that seems like that's easier than most things they do. I think it would be pretty standard. I would imagine so. Yeah. I would definitely imagine that that should be at least possible, right? Yep. Right. Where they can, you know, allow you to capture a game and, and not allow you to rip a movie straight to your computer, which, I mean, come on. Pirating is already well, look, way let's, too much as it is. We're all grown-ups here. We yeah. all know how to bypass the the content protection, right? Right. Yeah. So worse come to worse, you just got to <laughs> resort back to your old school shit. Well, unfortunately, you know, if I wanted if I wanted to record a game via Elgato, you know, I would have to use some lowball hard software to make it happen. No, and, son, no. you just get a splitter. I don't know, I'm yeah. lost. So you can I'm, get I'm you can get a H, <laughs> you can get a HDMI to DVI into a splitter which will then go HDMI to your TV and you can also have off ports for uh your audio video mm-hmm. and hook your Elgato in. Uh, There's even the an well. HDMI splitter mm-hmm. that you lose no quality I could show you yeah. and you can record with by, and bypass the content protection. Yeah. Which, you know, wow. none of this is, this <laughs> is allegedly. We, we don't want to encourage anybody to do no, said no. things. We wouldn't encourage that, but that's, I've never even imagined it was even possible. I mean, you I you can go to youtube.com forward slash whack 4863 look up uh, HDCP on my YouTube channel. There's some links in the description. Um, <laughs> total self-work for that. Yeah, we're going to link you. We're going to link you. Uh, hey, so let me ask you Shameless one other plug, question huh? real quick while we're on the whole Xbox versus PS3 thing. Let's do it. When is Xbox going to come out with a handheld? Because PS4 and the PS Vita are supposed to, you know, have this great symbiotic relationship. And I, I actually already use my Vita with the PS3 and, and there's some good, uh, good things I can do with that. But, when are they going to come out with a handheld? When are they going to go full circle, or are they going to do like a cell phone thing? That okay. Well, wh- when you say handheld, do you mean a device that's a gaming device that plays games? Yeah, I mean that you would be able to like. Okay, so the Vita, I'm able to uh, be playing a game on my PS3, go to right. remote play, play it on my on my Vita and my PlayStation, which is basically the same thing that the Wii came out and did with the Wii U. Right, correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, but they don't have anything like that, but I thought you may have been talking in terms of just second screen functionality type thing. No, but I mean, when, all they when have are we right going to see Microsoft go down this rabbit hole? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that they will. I don't think they will either because the Vita didn't do so good, you know, it's as far selling. as they wanted it to do. The Wii U can fucking fuck off. <laughs> 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 but the smart glass, dude, the smart glass is one of the coolest things. Like, I've never felt like in the future... 
it, you know, by <laughs> any piece of technology except for smart glass, at, you know, in recent memory. Because yeah. just being able to pull out my iPad, which isn't even a Microsoft product, and just access like my whole Xbox Live thing while I'm on there. Like, yeah, on, I mean, on I the send console. messages on there. I, yeah, I, it's I, cool. I'll be at work sending messages to Xbox yeah. friends. I mean, that's that's one of the things that I feel like the PlayStation uh, ecosystem is kind of missing. Yeah. Uh, from, well, but they're certain they're though. supposedly supposed to add all all of that in. Well, yeah. this the, I think the smart glass. I don't know this, but I think they were kind of promising that the smart glass functionality would kind of step its game up when they said things like about Battlefield Three having a uh, commander mode on smart Correct. glass yes. and. Uh, I think that that Tom Clancy game had some smart glass functionality. There's games that are going to be using it. So, for example, there's going to be in Dead Rising uh, three when you when you receive a phone call in the game, you will receive a if you have your smart glass connected and everything's set right. up properly, you receive a phone call on your phone from the from character the in the game. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's. Awesome. I mean, that's like that. Those are the types of things that make you go, "All right, well, this is next gen." You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's one of those things that I don't know if the Vita fills that void but it fills a much different void like whack was talking about take your entire experience yeah on the go i mean take your console experience on the go and for me i'm not i mean i've, I've experienced some of that and i don't think that's for me um, all right as far as the you know console experience on the go i mean generally i have five ten minutes to play a game right when i'm on the go so it's like bike race on my android phone uh, you know that's it yeah yeah and um it's just one of those things that i don't think I don't think that Microsoft is going to jump into that realm. Really? Uh, yeah. For some reason. I, I mean, maybe they're just going to let Nintendo kick it out of the park every time <laughs> with their Nintendo 2DS. Dude, that's is- pretty good. They took a step backwards. Like, Nintendo gives no fucks. Dude. <laughs> they, can, they care less you, you about to, what the world's doing. You have to doing. kind of give them a pat on the back for that, though. You know, in a in a world where everybody's like, oh, my God, we can't step there. We can't they're do this. They're spending Super Mario Brothers money, huh? Like, N- Nintendo's oh, yeah. just like, yeah. ah, bam, there it is. You like it or you don't like it. Get off my doorstep. That's right. <laughs> yeah, because this is a weird thing that happens. Like, I, I didn't own a Wii. I, I bought one for my parents. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't own a Wii. I didn't. Own, I'm not owning a Wii U. I haven't. I bought a, a Nintendo DS for my stepson. But I, you know, I haven't really been a Nintendo player in a long time. But I still have this weird fondness for like the Nintendo brand from my younger years. Right. Like, even though I'm not giving them money, you know, you know, I'm not really like an avid Nintendo consumer. You're wearing nowadays. a Nintendo shirt right now. This is the original. NES controller. <laughs> I just yeah, realized you why you're talking what I'm about this. Yeah, Does right. it say addicted above it? Or no, it's just, uh, a, just the NES controller. Oh, but see, I got the I don't NES know, it's controller. It's just a weird thing where, like, I would hate to see Nintendo just die, but at the same time, like, I got no interest in, like, their Wii U and, and stuff and 2DS and all this crazy shit. I think, I think they're, they're, uh, their campaign for the Wii U and just the name is one of the most misleading things because they are the casual consumer. They're not the, the people who buy the Wii or bought the Wii. And the the proposed consumer market for the Wii U, they're not in this bubble in which we live. They don't live and breathe gaming right. news and things like that. Yeah. So they don't get it. They look at the Wii U and go, well, fuck, I already got a Wii and move on. I mean, that's it. That's yeah. all the thought that happens in most people's minds. And you're not going to get that impulse purchase ever because it it's like the Wii 2. Is this a gamepad? Is this a console? What is <laughs> well, Why so expensive? I'm done. And then you just yeah. move on. Well, yeah. and that's why you were able to find the Wii U absolutely everywhere throughout Christmas after it launched. I mean, you, you could buy one at the local convenience store if you wanted to because that's how, you know, they had them coming out of their ears. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they had a lot of them. You know, well, when, I had to ask y'all something hmm. about you know, to take it back to the, the, the capture card situation and with the, I have to ask y'all this because y'all are both YouTube, YouTube heads, man, and, and you've laid your, your groundwork there. And I have to, I just, I want to know from y'all as creators, how does, how do y'all feel about this next generation of consoles giving everybody the ability in a small way to do what you do and turning these consoles into like these capture devices without having external equipment and giving everybody kind of like that voice? I've told you how I feel about it. I'd love to hear how Yeah, I'd love to hear whack. whack. Yeah, you know, I'm, a, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit both ways. It's, it's all going to come down to what is actually in the capture equipment. I mean, can I capture my mic? Can I not? I mean, if you just get a hundred thousand people uploading their gameplay clips or their, you know, their total gameplay, and there's nothing but the gameplay. Um, well, you can add commentary on the Xbox One for sure. Can you? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it yeah, at they the have Gamescom thing. Suite. Yeah, they have a whole editing suite. Yeah. Yeah. Um. 
You know, I mean, I guess it's uh, it it depends on where you're looking at it. From a commentator standpoint, do I want a million other commentators coming on that that aren't very good that are just going to bog up, you know, the the wavelength so that I can't get my content out of people? No. Um, do I want a hundred thousand kids to learn the lesson that they can't have a hundred million subscribers overnight. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. You know, I mean, if they're, if they're going to do it all on their console and, and it's going to save mom and dads uh, around the globe, a little bit of money, not having to buy a capture card and, and everything like that, you know, I guess whatever. Um, we can't stop it, so we're just going to have to duck head and, and start rolling with the punches as they come in. But I, I would expect to see um, a massive influx of channels, content, um, all sorts of stuff for six months. Well, like, how are you guys, like, you know, as kind of like the old guard you will soon be, <laughs> how are you guys, like, preparing, like, how are you bracing for this impact? Like, how does this really affect you in any kind of way? I mean, I don't think there's really anything I'm doing to brace for it, right. per se. I mean, it's really one of those things where you just kind of sit back and, and watch, like you talked about, Wag, the influx yeah. of content come through. I mean, it's going to be a lot of content. But at the same time, I agree with everything you said, Wack. Uh, but at the same time, I got to respect everybody getting their chance because at one point I made bad videos on YouTube. Right. Well, They're still did. up there. Yeah. They're still up there. Mm -hmm. I will, I refuse to remove them. Uh, because I want to, I want to always want to take a look back and go, I did start somewhere, you know, and everybody has to start somewhere. Yeah. And it's one of those things where you never know who's going to be the next big, you know, the, the next team art, the next, you know, syndicate and all this thing. You, you never yeah. know who's going to be that guy. Who's going to generate the next. The next incredible amount of content that, that you know that YouTube needs to keep growing, and you never know who it's going to be. Yeah. But at the same time, to get there, you need a lot of content. <laughs> and right. I mean, the amount of content that's all the amount of, and I hate to say it, but it's just true. The amount of terrible content that's already on YouTube is mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, I, when you talk to somebody who doesn't know how to filter the right content, and they're just like YouTube, that's that's like the world's trashiest videos like this everything in there just sucks right right, right. right. and it, it, you talk to somebody who doesn't know and that's what they think about it and you know they don't live in a go again this bubble in which we live and we we understand how to find the right content that we're looking for we know the search engines and we know all this stuff um they don't look at youtube as a platform to find good content and 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 it, that's why because there's just such an influx of bad content and bad videos being put on there it's going to get even worse with bad gameplays and people just sharing just because now they can. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, and it, so, it's going to, it's going to be that much harder to be found, you know? Um, and there's exactly. going to be that you much, that many more people that are like, Oh my God, YouTube only promotes the big guys. And it's like, well, yeah, oh. YouTube only promotes the big guys because yeah. they create good content. Right. Yeah. There's and an algorithm consistent. that nobody can figure out. There's an algorithm that nobody knows as to why whose video gets put up to, you know, related videos. Oh, dude, why. it's Billy Bob that's just like, yeah, that looks good. Let me <laughs> put that there. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Let me put that there. <laughs> and it may, be, it may be just that simple. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm sure that to generate more views and to maintain that audience and to, and to keep them interested in YouTube and not to, to go over back to their Facebook and anything like that, they there is something in place, some smart <clears throat> system in place to... To right. make sure that yeah. the related videos make sense to what you're watching and right. what you've seen in the past and what you've actually commented on and liked. And they take all of that stuff into consideration. And that's what, and, and of course, views and, and, and uh, there's so much that goes into. Well, that's kind of like at the heart of my question is like, do you guys see that and go, you know, you see the video editing suites and the capture, you know, uh, possibilities with these new consoles and go, oh, no, that's what I do. Or do you say, well, I got to make my content even better now. You know what I mean? Like all I think about is I got to make my 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 titles and my topics and my uh, my tags even better because if there's such an influx of content, that means that when somebody searches for anything related to what I'm making, there's going to be less of a chance for them to find it. I That's a, what I think is the, is kind of the biggest effect on YouTubers like me and Mr. Wack. I have another prediction for your competition though. 
I think that your new competition in next gen is going to be super fucking hot chicks that couldn't work capture devices or any of that <laughs> shit before. And now it's easy on like a Xbox one or a PS4 and they just make the stupidest videos ever, but they're super hot. So people are just subscribing and sharing. That already videos. happens. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that already happens right now. Yeah. To be totally honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm really not worried about it. One, because I'm not that good of a YouTuber. So, um, it's not that big of a deal to me, but two, uh, um, we kind of seen, we've already kind of seen this influx of commentators. I mean, there was a three month to six month period where almost every channel I knew of was giving away Elgato's like on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. And kids were getting them for free all over the place. The price was cheap too. So people were buying them. Um, sponsorships were happening. A whole, a whole lot of things were happening where, uh, a person that couldn't spend $350 on a hop hog could now get their hands on an Elgato, start a channel, do the whole nine yards. So for about six months to a year, we saw that spike in content where basically everybody and their mom had, uh, purchased an Elgato, got an Elgato for free. You know, the price on hop hog went down. They got a hop hog, whatever. Yep. So. We've kind of already been through that once, and and right. I think we'll weather the storm again. Yeah, I, I think we'll see thing. we'll see a six month <laughs> influx of a ton of content. It'll be all, all Call of Duty discouraged. Ghosts. They're all going to get discouraged, right? Right. They'll see that somebody came by and disliked their video, and they'll have a conniption fit. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people don't realize how hard work YouTube really is. I just did a commentary about this. Oh my god, dude! It's so much more work than anybody. Man, I mean, the amount of hours that you would put in to make a quality video—I don't know, son. I've done hard labor before. I would say it's no, more no. tedious than hard work. No, right? so it's a lot of work. You, it's a long time and a lot of effort. I mean, it really is a lot of effort that you have to put into the videos. It's a lot more than than most people imagine. So, Sean, right. Sean, yeah, dig holes for a living. Hard work, right? Fuck yeah, dig a ditch. <laughs> nuclear <laughs> nuclear scientist. Hard work. Uh, I, I, dude, I'm so stupid. I don't even know what nuclear <laughs> nuclear science tests even do, man. Okay, so I can barely pronounce it. But you could you could say that they both do hard work, right? Yeah, I, I see what you're getting at. So though. I really do. So YouTube on on the scale of physical work, it's easy. It, right. It's mental. It's you know the whole nine yards. But it's still in order to be successful at it, you have to work hard at what's there. Right. right. I would definitely agree that making content worthy of, you know, your subscriber base growing and, and being, you know, good premium content is it. That's the hard part. Right. You know, I can do anything. I can go home in 15 minutes and I'll, I'll put some shit on YouTube. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? The point. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. it really is that easy yeah. to get content on YouTube. The problem is, is all the networking, the Facebook, yep. the Twitter, mm -hmm. the, you know, getting with your buddies on Skype. And what, ta what time, what time do you upload it? Uh, what time you upload? How do you title it? Zone. How do you tag it? That's what I was talking about with the, with yep. the influx of content, mm -hmm. the titles and the tags become an issue. Then you got to make a thumbnail. If you, yep. if you, if you're, a, if you're a channel who cares enough, you got to make a thumbnail. You got to make sure that your audio levels are right. You got to make sure that your, you know, your gameplay, you got to disable the resample. You got to get some color correctors on yeah. there. You yep. got an intro. Who made your intro? Well, you got to make one or somebody else can make one. That's a pain in the dick to get somebody to edit something. What about an outro? You got to have some type right. of, you know, Keep just like YouTube, they got the related videos. Well, here's my related videos in my with in my video with, you know, some recent videos or a random video or something like that to try to keep people not only on YouTube but on my channel. Yeah, right, right. So, so it's yeah, it's not it's not digging a hole, you know. So I mean. people <laughs> that that just buy an Xbox One November twenty second, all this information that you're kind of you know giving us a a, a base explanation of, they're not going to know this when they just go to cut together that Killer Instinct video. No, I didn't know. Not this. unless they go by uh, either this podcast or go by my channel and look through videos that I've done in the past about and how to get what's big on that YouTube. channel. <laughs> yeah, it's in the description. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually wasn't trying 63. to plug myself there, but no, uh, cool. but cool. there are there are a handful plug of videos away. on my channel that are like uh, geared towards people growing their YouTube channel. No, I mean your channel and the Elgato stuff that you did was one of the reasons I went out and bought one, right? Because I saw some of the features that you guys had early access to, and I was just I was just excited about like the live commentaries and things like that. Mm -hmm. It was just 
those things blew my mind and, and got me excited to get an Elgato. So I would stash the HD PVR with the with the uh, component cables in the in the closet and pulled out an HD. I mean, got the Elgato and just have never turned back ever. Yeah, right. Such a great program. I mean, the capture card just captures. That's all it does. The program is where the, where it's at. Yep. Yep. That's what makes it so good. I mean, live streaming right out of there. Yeah. yeah. So easy. exactly. Exactly. So um. Anyway. Anyway. Enough about that, guys. One more piece of news for the week, and uh, PlayStation 4 virtual reality headset. This is a rumor that they're in the talks about potentially doing, so is it really a rumor? Uh, I'm confused, but the virtual reality headset looks and seems to be pretty incredible. And uh, it's, it's Oculus Rift type shit? I haven't actually seen this. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a little bit about it. There's not a whole lot about it to be seen. But it's just one of those pieces of news that you touch on because, I mean, virtual reality headset, headset with a PlayStation 4 branding on it. It's not just like a Sony thing. This is for PlayStation 4. Virtual reality headset covers your eyes, gives you the sound. It just does it all for you. I mean, I don't know if I want to be standing in my room, like, walking around, walking into shit, trying to see what's going on. Yeah, that's the problem with the Oculus Rift, right? Is, like, there's the, the way that it's applied, like, never really kind of translate to, translates to a good gaming experience. You it's, know? It's definitely one of those things that's needs a little bit of, of tweaking to, to, to fit the consumer. Yeah, the everyday you know, consumer. It's, you know, also, I just read about the Illuma room was like too expensive for Xbox to put it in. But that you looked know. cool as shit though. Dude, that looks, that look, <laughs> that blew me away harder than the virtual reality thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, that um, Illuma room thing was, was gangster. Anyway, the, the virtual reality headset, man, it just seems like something that, it seems like such a cool futuristic idea, but I don't see the, the application for it like out the gate here. Yeah, it'd be you know? a little, it would be a little challenging. I think the price may be a barrier. Just to get get something like that in the hands of the consumer would I, I think it costs too much. In my opinion, I think it's it seems cool. It's something they probably actually do want to do, but I don't think that I don't think we're actually going to see it come out. In my humble opinion, but it just takes that one brilliant idea to say this is the the killer app for a virtual reality headset, and then you know. We're off to the races. Everybody's trying to make virtual reality headsets. And <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. the way I'd look at it is the first one to get there wins. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. A- as I'm listening to you guys talk about it, I'm thinking, well, okay, virtual virtual reality headset means that it's it's on my head. So the my body is the controller, right? Yeah, I guess. I, Hello, I mean, connect. How, how's that? How's that work? <laughs> is it? Uh, am I going to feel like I'm wearing? A Wii on my head because I got to swing my <laughs> arms and you know what I mean. So right, like you'd want to feel like that headset would actually put you in the 3D space of the game mm-hmm. rather than oh I'm I mean, wearing a headset the whole right idea now. Right. Virtual reality, right. yeah. But is but the then 3D space. But, but then you brought up a good point. I mean, you're tripping over your coffee table because you can't actually. I mean, unless it's like an augmented reality kind of thing, and at that point, then it's boring. I mean, throw the thing in the yeah. piece, of, you know, in the dumpster yeah. at that point. If it's an augmented exactly. reality thing where you're looking at your couch and your sofa and, and your life as it is, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't right. know. I think the, I think the best thing in, in, in kind of the form of a headset or wear a wearable technology, um, in the near future that would maybe fit in line with gaming would be the Google Glass. Google yes. Glass. Um, I think that, you know, being that obviously it's Google, it's going to be Android based. I think there could be some applications. Uh, that go along with some games that could be quite impressive. Well, one more, the one more thing before we move on from virtual reality. How, how many porn-based games are we going to see come out on it? <laughs> I mean, that, that's really the deciding Don't go factor fly on, on whether me. people are going to buy Don't, it or not. <laughs> Don't go iFly on me. <laughs> <laughs> it takes that one brilliant idea. I said it. That, that, that one brilliant, brilliant idea. idea, and all of a sudden, bam, marketing. Marketing, yep. yeah. But I mean, no, going back to Google Glass, I mean, have you seen this whack? I know me and me and Mr. Sean have seen it. We talked about it before, but have you seen Google Glass? I am not familiar with it. So I, I quick description. It's basically a set of glasses. You could have them with no lenses or sunglass lenses or real lenses. And it's got a small glass that will put right up in the upper corner of your peripheral, maybe on the right hand side in one eyeball. Uh, it only puts it on one side and it connects to batteries and a small computer and all that stuff that's right on the glasses. Mm-hmm. And it puts that small screen right in your peripheral and it basically si- it feeds you information. It also has a camera on it. You can talk to it, tell it, take pictures, things of that nature. So, it is your phone. So we're basically talking about 
uh, the the sunglasses from True Lies that was hooked to the camera in the pack of cigarettes. You kind of, but like one hundred thousand times better. Well, yeah, of yeah, course. It's, it's it's a, a, basically, it's work. like a it's it's like your smartphone, you know, in in a wearable kind of wearable technology form exactly. you know that's really like not that invasive like you know it doesn't seem like it, it it's that uh you know heavy or the right. screen right. size is stu- stu- stupid small but it's in your field of vision right, yeah. it's so close to your field of vision that when you look up and focus on it you can still see all the regular all your regular life yeah. stuff in your peripheral and then it puts it you know you can see information fed to you right on that screen that's super close like super close to your eye nearly touching your uh your eyebrow there and um you know, it it basically feeds you information just like your phone or anything else would. It's an LCD screen that is. It, it's also see through, so yeah. you know it doesn't. It's not as invasive as you might imagine. I'm gonna tell you what. I want a pair, and I'm gonna go driving in them like today. I want to see. Yeah, you should you should check them out. It, it <clears throat> seems like uh, it, it's man. I'm telling you, that's the thing that seems like it was built for gaming. Like I know that it wasn't built for gaming, but no, not at all. It seems like it could really have some serious like functionality in the world in a gamer's life. I mean, basically, they could take they could take your mini map and put it right there. Yeah, that was kind of like a simple example a of simple, something. Simple example. Yeah, you know, just but when developers get their hands uh, on technology like that, the things that they can think of are just incredible. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So so take smart glass. And and add it to Google Glass and see what you see what you end up with. Right. right? As right. far as you know, being able you can talk to it and you can take pictures. With well, it. Microsoft yeah. actually filed a patent for something pretty much exactly like Google Glass, which uh, you know th- these companies file patents and stuff all the time. But yeah. that was a new story that broke a while back. But um, it's true. You can see that that they're thinking about this in a gamer sense, like they they're realizing like you know the Google Glass application here could could really go with the gaming lifestyle. That's right. Because it's like Xbox One says, you know, they're kind of corny little, you know, cliche thing was like, it's one. We're putting everything in the one. Like, yeah. you know, we're simplifying shit. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't want to have to put on, I, I sit down a game. I don't want to put on a virtual reality headset and then a pair of he- headphones and then grab my controller and then, you know, put on my Google Glass. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, dude, like, let's make this easier. Like, can I put on one headset that does all of this shit? Well, that's, well, the virtual reality headset, the proposed virtual reality headset does include the headphones. I mean, it's, it's got the earpiece as well. I hope so. And obviously you can't put glass, Google glass inside of the virtual reality headset that covers your head. So it would be an all in one piece, but yeah. I really think that the price, I mean, no bullshit here. I think the price would be like in the ballpark of six to eight hundred dollars just for that headset. I can't see them making it much cheaper than that because if they give it to you, it's got to have monitors on both eyes that line up, and maybe it's a 3D experience, which is cool. Uh, but on both, it's got to have a monitor on both eyes that line up, and it, I mean, it, yes, it would be maybe similar to a 60-inch screen in front of you, but at the same time, like the the cost of making that, getting it to the consumer's hands, is going to be it's going to be too much. So the real problem is economics. Like they can do it. But well, of course, just we not can do at a lot a, of things. At, yeah, they can do it, but not at a price where people are going to go. I'm going to get that. Exactly. That's my thought on it. How sad. I don't think it's. I don't think it's feasible or realistic for them to bring it to to consumers. Yeah. Well, you know, people said it wasn't feasible or realistic for everybody to have a phone that they took with them either. So. Well, I don't think it's feasible or realistic this year or even next yeah, but year. The real question is, will virtual reality really ever work? Because I don't know if you remember this, but like in the 90s, the Oculus Rift was something that kind of had all this, you know, fanfare around it. And then it just went away. And then not even all that long ago, the, the same guy, you know, who, who kind of was at the at the forefront of it, kind of dug it back up and was like, oh, I'm going to try to bring this back. And so now you see it in a lot of news stories. But like. It's not new technology so much, mm-hmm. you know. So will well, I mean, virtual at, reality ever work? Well, like, I mean, look at three D TVs. You know, this this God. whole thing that they they really tried. They really tried hard to push. They tried hard, this. but the only reason that they tried hard is because Steven Spielberg comes out and says three D is the future of movies, and then literally the next day, every TV you could buy in a store was three D. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, it, but now it's not so much. I mean, 3D compatibility is becoming less and less. When you go look at the TV section in the store, I mean, it's it, it's still there. Don't get me wrong; it still exists because there still are some fantastic 3D movies. It's not that that's not a, that's not a good platform. It's just maybe not feasible for the everyday consumer. Right? Yeah. 
So that's kind of how I feel about that's kind of how I feel about the VR headset is that it's probably a fantastic idea, probably works amazingly, but for the everyday consumer, for it to be worth it for them to bring it out to us, I got to think that it may not be quite at that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, nobody mentioned anything or caught my joke about how I wanted to go driving with those uh, those glasses on. I don't. Uh, still don't catch you. Yeah, I missed it. Missed you it. can't text and drive. You know, you, you're oh, obviously yeah. <laughs> not going to be able to wear it's your these phone sunglasses. That you're staring at. Okay. And All drive. Right, I get it. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's so, not as good when you have to explain it, but <laughs> no, I still like it. I still like it. Google Glass and drive. No glass and drive. That's so when Wax driving around in his Aston Martin from all his YouTube money, oh crap, with a virtual reality headset on. That's the other thing that I can't wait for, Wax. When all these kids get on YouTube and think they're about to make it big, yeah. and make all that money, <laughs> yeah. And then they realize all that money don't exist. There's nothing worse than when you click on a YouTube video with 30 <laughs> views and they're running ads. <laughs> oh man you want to talk about ads right quick dude Whack, what's your stance on ad block uh you know i don't care you know i mean if they if you're that anal about not seeing advertisements fine you know go ahead and use it the fact of the matter is is that at the end of the day youtube wants ads on every video that's on youtube correct or they'll I mean, start charging you to use youtube like that's the reality of it yeah that's right well i mean what do you think about ad block starting a kickstarter to to advertise ad block what <laughs> <laughs> that sounds absolutely amazing is that a Leo, leonardo dicaprio movie <laughs> you, you know what happens when when things that were free start to advertise what's that they start charging Right. So right. I'm okay with them advertising to to get their product, and then their product all of a sudden starts costing fifty bucks or something like that to you know twelve ninety nine a, a month to to keep it. Um, that that's perfectly fine by me. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, but I genuinely think that ad block is kind of. I mean, it, it's kind of a. I don't know. I, I just don't like the whole idea. Because at the end of the day, like we talked about how much work YouTube really is and most people don't, don't catch the whole drift. I mean, it's not like you're, I can't say that you're stealing using Adblock because it's not like you really, I don't know, it's not like really, I really just, had anything for you to steal you're anyway. You're just circumventing the whole yeah. thing here, but it's so ridiculous that like, it's already like a miracle that you can just open up YouTube right now and you can watch whatever content you want just like, you know, in five seconds. And then you're going to mm-hmm. get upset that you have to watch an ad for, you know, maybe five 30 seconds, seconds, five to 15 seconds, and then you can skip it if you really want. And I don't know if people realize this, but if you sign in to Google and YouTube, it'll try to show you ads based on the things that you're Your watching. Interests. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. So it's yeah. not that bad. Like, it's not this evil shit that's happening. Like, yeah. I don't know. I well, mean, but at the end of the day, it, I mean, without ads, without ads, without content creators like me and you, Mister Wag, who get some ad revenue from the from the people who don't use AdBlock, or the people who are on mobile who can't use AdBlock in some cases. I mean, I know there is AdBlock for mobile. Most, most people don't have it, but um, you know, we do get financial reimbursement for our hard work that we talked about before. Uh, you know, don't that doesn't ad block. Let's say, let's say their campaign is successful and so many more people start using ad block. Do you think that if less and less money goes around from, you know, for people like us and content creators that a lot of people stop doing it? Oh, absolutely. That's, that's the, yeah. that's the problem. That's the perpetuating cycle that, that kind of, pr- that, that makes me really concerned about this whole thing is that, you know, we have all this great content because people care to make it because it can be, uh, at least mildly lucrative or, or for me, it's just a per- perpetuating cycle, right? I get a little bit of money from YouTube. I reinvest it into my hobby. So it's always a hobby, but I can make my hobby more a- eventful and more exciting because I can reinvest a little bit of money that I get from it back into it. Right. So and then the it, people it, who are watching you are benefiting in the same way by getting to see some, you know, content that they're interested because in. Because if so, my content, if I make more content or if I make a, a better content or if I have uh, ideas or opinions about things that I can, I can, uh, access because, because of the, con- you know, the content I've created and, and the, uh, the money I've made from that, yeah. uh, then they get more content. And if they use ad block, then they get less content, right? Here, here's what I think they should do. Is YouTube should come up with their own ad block block program, 
and it should charge, you know, a quarter a cent or a half a cent or whatever to each person, you know, each time they watch a video. And that quarter cent or half a cent should go to the content creator. That would be, I mean, I would, that would so be awesome. Do you want to ad block this video? Yes. Okay. You know, your account's going to be charged a quarter of a penny. They'll never do that. They have it never work. No. But don't you think if ad block really it, it became. It would work. They may never do it, but no, it would never right, work. Yeah. <laughs> but don't you think if ad block really became like a, a, like a thing that people were really using, like in massive amounts, like, you know, Google or YouTube rather would say, well, we're going to find a way to fix this because that's how they make their money. Yeah. yeah exactly. The reason you can, exactly. the reason you can do YouTube free is because they, they're running ads everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. They'd code around it. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing that they, they can code around it, but the problem is, like Google Chrome, for example, they, in some capacity, have to support ad block because if they want to survive in the world that is browsers, you know, the Internet Explorer and Firefox, they support ad block. So you would lose a lot of your consumers on Google Chrome if you don't support, you know, some of the higher used uh, apps on the other browsers. But here's the problem, though: that not they wouldn't not enough to care. But it affects you because people are using ad block on you. And it's like the, the numbers of the users of ad block aren't high enough for YouTube to say or Google to say, oh, this is causing this is hitting our pockets. It's well, hitting well, your let me, pockets. Let me so ask they don't you quite care this. yet. Let me, let me ask you this, uh, Sensei. So on uh, on your options under advanced settings for your video, yep. you have the option to put it on. A monetized platform only, which means basically, if they have ad block, they're not going to be able to watch a video. Why not do that? I never knew that existed, to be honest with you. <laughs> and I wouldn't do that at this point. Let's say it gets to the point where it really does start to affect it. The the point that we're talking about, I think everything's pretty decent right now, to be honest with you. But let's say they do get their campaign out there and they get a Super Bowl ad for ad block and, and, and it just gets stupid with, with the amount of people that do it. And I see a significant drop in, in the amount of, uh, in the amount of, you know, financial return that I get out of this whole system. Then maybe that's something that'd be considered. I, I don't really, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I do this as a hobby and it's, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. It really is, but, you know, it costs money, you know, that I don't necessarily have. I have to support a family, wife, you know, I do have the full time job, but that goes to all of this. Yeah. This is its own perpetuating cycle right here. I buy monitors. I got a new chair. Only reason I get a chair, my old chair is busted as hell. Only reason I get a new chair is because I have a little bit of money that comes from YouTube. I saved up for a, a little while to get this new chair and it doesn't affect my day to day income. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm able to make my content and consistently create and consistently, you know, put back into that system is because I do get that that rebound money from the system that we're talking about. If it changes, I don't know. I don't know how that would change my content. I really don't. Right. Because then I'd have to go back to putting money back into the system from from, you know, from my money. And then the wife would have a problem with that. So then <laughs> we got a problem around here. You know, happy yeah. wife, happy wife, happy life. So absolutely. Well, that kind of brings up the idea of, you know, having to adapt to the way things are changing. Like, you know, just like we talked about earlier with the everybody being able to upload YouTube content and capture shit. You know, you just have to keep adapting to everything, you know, because it's not going to stay like this forever. You yeah, know what look, I mean? Well, I've never been a money whore when it comes to YouTube. I mean, I started YouTube as a hobby. It'll always be a hobby. And, and playing games is a hobby. It's all fun. But, you know, and I probably never stop YouTube. Let's say I never make a penny off of YouTube again. I won't stop, but I can't. I can't guarantee that I'll make it as consistently. I can't guarantee that there's as much incentive to make as quality content as I try to put out. I mean, you know, it's that incentive that keeps the drive going. You know, you know what I mean, Mr. Wack? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, the fact is that there's going to be this bum rush of horrible content. It's going to make your content look better. It's going to make my content look better. I'm okay with that. <laughs> and, and really, I mean, it's going to bring people that maybe aren't, haven't ever watched YouTube commentaries onto YouTube as well. So there is a plus side to it. You know, absolutely. You talk about the proverbial bubble that we all, you know, as YouTubers live in that we know, you know, there's great content out there and you kind of go here, you kind of go there and you, you pick the, the ones that you like. But there are gamers out there that have no idea. I mean, take me for example, uh, what, two years ago. 
I didn't know that. You know, I mean, the closest I got to uh, to seeing a YouTube commentary was when I looked up how to, you know, do something in a video game because I wanted a certain achievement or trophy, you yeah, know. And, correct, and that correct. was just a, a real quick, okay, I'll look this up. Oh, okay, some random dude posted it, you know, whatever. Oh, that's how I do it. I close it. You know, that was my, uh, other than that and little kitty videos, that was my extent of things I'd watched on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely interesting to try to explain somebody to someone the, the whole subscribe process. Oh, to someone who doesn't forget. live in that perver- proverbial bubble. Yeah. And I mean, they get, they get like because you can like things on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, I mean, comment, of course, that's just the comment section, but the subscribe button is something that's not, it's not universal language yet across the internet. And, 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 right. You know, and do it I is have to, to pay us for a subscription? We, exactly. Me subscribe. To make an account. Exactly. Yeah. Subscribe is something that usually costs money. So exactly. When I explain, yep. Like, I try to explain what I do on YouTube to my mom, and she's like, subscribe? What does that mean? <laughs> does that cost money? I'm like, no, YouTube is free. She's like, well, how do you make the money that you make? And I'm like, well, the advertisement revenue. And that just blew her mind. So she was out. She was done. She didn't want to hear any more because she didn't understand any of that. That sounds right. like the best podcast ever. You, <laughs> you yeah, explaining mom, YouTube <laughs> to your mom. <laughs> that would that be does interesting sound funny. to tell. Um, but anyway, guys, we are well over time, I'm sure. So thank you so much, Mr. Wack, for joining us. Maybe we'll get you back another week. Yeah. Hey, what episode did you say this was? This is 46, brother. Yes, sir. 46. Okay. So have me back on episode 4863. Four, 4863. <laughs> How about Make I get sure you back that on is, episode That is 48. my episode. So when you All hit right. that. All right. That's my. That's, uh, well, shit. If we do this weekly, that's what, uh, 25 years? That's from when now? I'll be, uh, dead. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have my walker long, with, uh, <laughs> with the tennis balls on them and this really cool Clash of the Commentators belt that I, uh, that, that I, uh, thumb wrestled for. for. It's oh, a date. <laughs> it's a date. It's a date, brother. Well, anyway, thank you so much for joining us. You can follow him on Twitter. He is at whack. 4863. You can follow me. I'm at 26 TV and you are at Sean Zulu. Sean underscore Zulu, which I totally <laughs> goofed in the beginning. Sean underscore Zulu. Don't forget the other code. Thank you guys for joining us. This is Startup X episode 46. And we're out. Peace. Peace.